Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda Dittlinger and I am a neurodivergent woman. I have autism, ADHD, I have a rare memory disorder called SDAM, which stands for Severely Deficient Autobiographical Memory, and I have aphantasia, which means I have the inability to visualize in my mind's eye. So because of all these neurodivergencies, I've kind of gotten more interested in learning about how my brain works and specifically for this video, how memory works. Because a lot of times people ask me, you know, questions about my memory and it's really hard to explain. And sometimes it's even hard to kind of like think back on examples to give somebody. And so I'm trying to learn a little bit more about memory. I'm not a scientist, not a researcher, not a medical professional, just a neurodivergent woman trying to explain my intricacies. <laughs> so I, like I said, I am trying to learn a little bit more about memory and break it down to simplify it because, you know, scientists can get really technical really fast and it can get very overwhelming. When I first learned about um, SDAM, about four years ago, it was such a relief because I had always known that I had memory problems, but I didn't know how to explain it to anybody. I just felt like my memory was very different than other people's. And it was kind of scary because it's like, did I have Alzheimer's? You know, I like, can, you know, it was like, that was, that was the only memory disorder that I knew of at that time. So, SDM, what is it? It is a lifelong inability to vividly recollect, recollect or re-experience past events in first person. So that word lifelong is important. Um, researchers are pretty much sure that we are born with SDAM. It isn't something that happens through trauma. Now, sometimes there are people who have brain injuries and, you know, do have a similar experience to SDAM, but then that's going to be called something else from my understanding. So I remember grow, and it's so funny when you say the word remember, and I'll try to explain that a little bit later. I have a knowing, and that'll come up later, about when I was a kid, even, you know, like as an older child, just not remembering stuff from when I was really little. And other kids my age would talk about their memories from when they were like four and five. And I'm just like, mm, no, I don't have that. So, and then as I got older, of course, it felt like it got worse and worse and it, it was actually kind of disturbing. But then around 38 is when I first read research on SDAM and I was like, oh my gosh, there's other people out there like me. This is awesome. And I love that now more and more people are hearing about it. It is still pretty darn rare. Um, I looked up rare disorder is I think less than 4% of the population. And right now SDAM, you know, I, current research suggests it's about 2% of the population that ha might have SDAM. And I think that like me, I got to age 38 before I realized that there was a name for it. So I think the more people hear about it, you know, maybe that percentage will go up because they'll self-identify and go, oh, I got that. So what are the different types of memory and how does SDAM work? So this is my, <laughs> my understanding of it. So we have sensory memories, which are like three seconds. It's that burst of like you re remember something from a sensory experience. You have short-term memory and working memory, which are similar and they are like 30 seconds to a few days and you use that information to carry out your plans and your goals but it's stuff that if you don't you know really work at it it doesn't get stored into your long-term memory your long-term memory is where learning happens so in order for you to learn something that knowledge has to be stored it, and I'm like pointing back. I don't know where it is in the brain. Uh, <laughs> the, the information has to go from short term to your long term memory. Um, I have ADHD, which affects your working memory. So that is a whole another fun web of like teasing out where my memory issues come from. 
So in your long-term memory umbrella, there are different types of memory that scientists have kind of teased out. And one is called your semantic memory. And this is information about the world. It's knowledge about the meanings of words. It's just general things like, oh, I know that Paris is in France. It's just knowledge memory. Then you have procedural memory. Procedural memory is kind of like muscle memory and just motor skills. So if you haven't ridden a bike in 20 years and you get on a bicycle, you might think that you've forgotten how to ride it, but you kind of start to get on it and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, how do I remember how to do this? That is your procedural memory kicking in and taking over for you. Then you have your episodic memory, and this is where SDAM comes in. Es espotic, blah, blah, blah. Episodic memory is memory, memories from our personal experience. So as a person with SDAM, I don't relive my memories in first person. And that's why I say I have a knowing. So sometimes when an event happens to me, or that sounds weird, but you know, like, okay, for instance, I went to Disney World this last summer. That was an event, a big event that happened in my life. Well, that knowledge of th that does get stored in my semantic memory. I know I went to Disney World, but I can't relive the experience in first person. I can't like, imagine what it felt like to be on a roller coaster and have the air rushing through my hair and the smells and the sounds of the crowd. I can't relive that experience. I just know that I went to Disney World this year and I know that, you know, I did these things. The further out on my timeline, the less I will remember even those events unless they get retold over and over and over. So some of the memories that a episodic memories that stick in my semantic memory longer are things that have been funny stories from my childhood that we have told over and over as family stories, that kind of thing, or bigger life events like going to Disney World is, you know, a special thing, but something that might be smaller, such as, you know, something that may have happened at the grocery store two months ago, something little like that may just blip out totally but that's common and see that's why I think I struggled with trying to understand my memory loss because I a lot of people will say oh I have a bad memory and I would always go hmm but I think your word for bad memory and my word for bad memory are different but without a language to really get down deep and describe these things you know I'm sitting over here thinking bad memory and that person sitting bad memory and they don't match up. <laughs> Someone, you know, everybody will forget little things that happen to them. I will sometimes forget entire huge events that happen to me. Um, it is just incredibly often that I am on the phone with my sister who we suspect probably has the opposite of me, which has the hyper memory. Um, She's always been opposite me in a lot of ways. She's also hyper uh, Fantasia, where she has super vivid visuals in her face, in her mind's eye. But she will will be on the phone and she'll be like, "Oh, Amanda, do you remember blah 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 from when we were kids?" And I'm just like, "No," but she can recall it in extreme detail, and it's just not even on my radar. Now, one interesting thing, and then I've heard other people with SDAM report. And I also have this, that when I look at a photograph of something that happened, I, or not even looking at it, it's just, I know that there's a photo of that event. I can't see it because I have Aphantasia, so I cannot visualize in my mind's eye, but it's like I can recall or remember that photo. The thing is, I can what is in that photo is the extent of the memory. Um, I won't remember anything necessarily that happened outside or around that photo. <laughs> like it's just that moment in time. 
Um, and there's often times where I will see an old photo of myself and have absolutely no recollection of anything about where I was or when I was or what happened in that photo. It's very weird, very weird. Um, but it's also interesting to hear other people talk about and describe the fact that we can think about a photograph without actually seeing it in our minds. Because we're like, most people can visualize. Aphantasia is also another rare disorder. Um, <laughs> but for instance, I, well, that's almost a whole other video. But really quickly, just, you know. Um, when I think of somebody that I don't interact with super often, I will a lot of times think of the most recent photo of them. So with Facebook, a lot of times that's their profile picture. So I, when I'm thinking of somebody because I can't visualize what they look like, but for some reason my memory can remember photographs, it's whatever your profile picture is on Facebook is how I'm thinking of you. Can't see it, can't see the photograph in my mind, but it's like the angle of that face, how your hair might have been styled that day, that kind of thing. So that that's actually kind of funny and actually I probably might do a whole different video on that. But um, anyway, I hope that this video kind of explains a little bit about memory and how it works and how it relates to SDAM. Again, I would really strongly like to reiterate that I am not a scientist. I'm just doing my own research and trying to interpret interpret the data that I'm reading and try to turn it into words that make sense. Um, if you have more extensive knowledge on this, please comment down below. Um, I am so interested in learning, so let's all learn together. And until the next time, guys, have a good one.